Hi, this is a video on the wave nature of light for chemistry. And there, there's another video on the particle or quanta, quantized nature of light. But this is the first uh, of a video relating to uh, chapter 6 of Brown, LeMay, Burston, and Murphy's Chemistry, The Central Science. And the title of that chapter is The Electronic Structure of Atoms. So this whole chapter is helping uh, us get a, a sense of how the electrons, remember an atom, uh, uh, the, the fundamental units of the universe are atoms. And within atoms you have a, a kind of compact center we call a nucleus with uh, particles like protons and neutrons. Uh, but then around that nucleus are electrons, negatively charged. Are they particles or are they waves? This is what modern physics has been wrestling with to some extent for the last a hundred years or so, more than a hundred years. So this video is on the wave nature of light, the first section in this chapter on the electronic structure of atoms. So waves, you've probably come across a wave at some point. Uh, maybe you've been on a boat, uh, or maybe you've watched a boat uh, go through the water, or maybe you've thrown a rock in a pond, or maybe you've filled a bathtub with water and watched the water jostle back and forth. So a wave it, you know, is an up and down kind of motion physically, uh, or it could be a back and forth uh, motion physically, like if you have a flute, you know, that's a uh, what's called a longitudinal wave. That's not important right now, that's physics. But anyway, uh, waves have a wavelength, um, so like you might have a boat that's going really fast, and the waves are, are like that, with a short wavelength. What I mean by that is a short distance between crest to crest, from the top to the top. Talk about that in a second. Um, lambda, this little letter here is a Greek letter called lambda. Um, we use uh, often use Greek letters in science. Um, who knows? They, they were classically trained when they started doing these things. So waves have a wavelength. That's a distance between any part and the similar part on the next next wave. They have a frequency. That's that's how how many waves you have in in say a second. You know so cycles per second. How many up and downs do you have in a second? Uh, believe it or not, uh, that's the Greek letter nu, which is like an N. Looks like a V. I, I don't suppose you'll go uh, wrong in a chemistry class to call it a V, uh, but it's it's actually a nu, but who cares? Okay, uh, and then they have a speed. So the 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 speed of a, of a, a wave, uh, let's say you have a boat going really fast, well the speed of the wave it creates is going to be fast. If the boat's going slower, the speed of the wave is going to be slower. So waves, we're, we're somewhat acquainted with waves from life, even if from throwing a rock in a pond uh, or filling a bathtub, so to speak, and watching maybe if we if we stir the water, you know, to get get the bubbles going, you know, then then the wave goes back back and forth across. And of course, there are sound waves, um, such as a musical instrument um, creates. Uh, when a plane goes a certain speed and breaks the, the sonic barrier, um, sound is a wave. It, there's a boom, a sonic boom, uh, because the speed of the plane has exceeded the speed of sound. So there are waves all around us, light waves. If you're watching this, um, it's because light waves are reaching the retina of your eye, and light waves have a certain frequency. Okay, so hopefully you get the point. So let's say this is a wave. The distance from any two equivalent points on the wave, so it could be from crest to crest, it could be from trough to trough, it could be from zero to zero, uh, but basically that's one wavelength lambda. And then amplitude is the kind of uh, intensity, as it were, of, of the wave. Uh, maybe intensity is not the right word to use, but how uh, high the wave is, so to speak, is the amplitude of the wave. And then frequency is how many up and downs a wave has, say, per second. So we call one cycle per second one hertz, um, named after uh, the guy that that uh, did a lot with this hertz. But um, if let's say let's say that it this is one second. I just arbitrarily called this one second. It could have been longer or shorter. But but let's say that in one second we have this many up and downs. So this would be. Uh, one, two, looks like a little more than two and a quarter no. cycles per second. That's frequency. 
how many up and downs you have in a second. So this might be something familiar to you. Amplitude, wavelength, frequency. This is the kind of language of um, waves. Okay, now waves, there are electromagnetic waves as well. Um, but before we get there, a hertz is a common frequency unit. I've already mentioned this. Cycles per second, sometimes called s to the negative 1. That negative 1 means it's 1 over s. Anything to a negative power means you put it in the denominator. So s to the minus 1 means 1 over s to the 1. Um, and so that's that basically means per second. Um, the, cycle, the word cycle is often admit, omitted. Cycles per second, often they just say per second. Um, some common wavelengths. Um, the angstrom is a very small m unit of wavelength, 10 to the minus 10 power. When you talk about angstrom wavelengths, you're talking about atomic wavelengths. We we're talking really small kinds of, of wavelengths. But there are also the nan nanometer, 10 to the minus 9 meters. A lot of waves, like visible waves um, from, from light, you might use nanometers to measure those. Uh, and then, of course, micro, micrometer, um, 10 to the minus 6. This would be more in the radio frequency, radio waves, um, length of waves. Um, now, you probably haven't experienced this if you're watching this video. Uh, but it used to be, back in the old days when I was a boy, um, they used uh, AM frequencies. We hardly ever use AM frequencies anymore. Everything we listen to is in the FM kind of, of uh, part of the spectrum. But it used to be um, that some stations, well, actually, when I was a boy, all the stations were AM. And this is a really, really long radio wavelength. We're talking uh, wavelengths that could be, you know, a football field or more long. These are long wavelengths. So we're talking, you know, it takes a whole football field to go through one whole cycle of, of the electromagnetic wave. Well, it used to be that when you'd go under a bridge with an AM station, you it would cut out. You, you couldn't hear it when you went under the bridge uh, or when you went in a tunnel for sure. And the reason uh, is because the wavelength was too long to fit under the bridge, so to speak, so that your radio could... could capture it in the car. We don't have those problems anymore. Thank you, science. But anyway, these are some of the, the common lengths uh, for, for waves. Okay, now, electromagnetic waves. So these go from very sh uh, short uh, or very long wavelengths to very short wavelengths. So radio frequencies, like I was telling you, AM, FM, television, radio frequencies, these are very long waves. So football field you know, type length um, waves. But then the waves get, get shorter. There are things called microwaves, the microwave oven. Uh, most homes uh, have microwaves in them. This is, a, this is great. This is a modern invention that basically uses microwaves to cook things. Um, and microwaves are shorter. They're pretty, they're pretty long waves. They're still pretty long waves, but they are shorter um, than radio waves. Um, infrared rays are a little bit um, shorter than microwaves, uh, but they're still uh, less, they're, they're not as long, they're not as, they're not as short as visible light. So infrared is used sometimes for night, night vision. Um, so like when army units go out at night and they have night vision on their go goggles, so to speak, <laughs> whatever you call them, um, it's the infrared that help them see things at night. Um, because these goggles can detect uh, infrared light, uh, they can see people moving around in the dark. That's, that's what, where night vision comes from. Of course, our eyes are attuned to the visible light spectrum. Very, very small uh, spectrum of light that our, our retinas can, can process. And even within that visible uh, light spectrum, you have rather um, longer waves with red to the shorter waves on the other end, blue and, and, and violet and so forth. So even within the visible light spectrum, there, there are longer red and shorter blue uh, wavelengths. Of course, ultraviolet. Ultraviolet is, is a shorter wavelength than our visible eyes. You know, you might use ultraviolet also to see um, 
uh, things like um, fingerprints and, and those sorts of things that we can't see with our visible, visible eye. And of course, X-rays uh, and gamma rays are uh, really, really short wavelengths. So visible light can't pe penetrate uh, my body, uh, but uh, Superman has X-ray vision. Um, and because of, because of the shorter wavelength of, of those things that he can see, uh, Superman can see inside our bodies. He can see our hearts and our livers and things like that because uh, his eyes are able to pick up a even shorter wavelength um, than, um, than the visible light spectrum. Of course, gamma rays are supposedly what made uh, the Hulk uh, become the Hulk. Uh, because he received gamma ray radiation. In reality, gamma ray radiation is very damaging and would kill you. But hey, it's a comic book. Um, so th this, these electromagnetic waves go from longer frequencies uh, to shorter frequencies. Now, unlike water waves uh, and so forth, electromagnetic waves, and all the waves on the previous slide are electromagnetic waves. Uh, they're the waves of energy, as it were, waves of, of light-related phenomena. Um, electromagnetic waves, unlike water waves, all have the same speed. This is something that uh, was determined even before Einstein, that the universe has a speed limit. There is a universal speed limit. Nothing can move faster than the speed of light, which we abbreviate as C. C stands for the speed of light. And the speed of light has been uh, measured. You can read in the textbook or online somewhere uh, how the, the measurement was made. Uh, but the speed of light is basically 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. That's actually 2.99, but who cares, right? Um, actually, sometimes you do care in physics and chemistry, but I don't care because I'm just making a video. Um, so all electromagnetic waves have the same speed. What this means is um, that the electromagnetic spectrum that I just had on the previous page, uh, previous uh, uh, slide is about varying wavelengths and frequencies. It's not about different speeds. The electromagnetic spectrum, all of these kinds of waves have the same speed, the speed of light, but they vary in their wavelength and frequency. And so what we find is that the speed of light is a constant, that the wavelength and the uh, frequency, they are always going to multiply together to, to equal 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So if, if the wavelength lambda becomes longer, then the frequency nu becomes shorter. C equals lambda nu. Um, so uh, the longer, longer the wavelength, the shorter the frequency, uh, the shorter the wavelength, the longer uh, the frequency. And so this is, this is uh, a basic formula uh, that we're going to use uh, when it or that you'll use at some point if you do physics and chemistry um, about figuring out the, the relationship between the wavelength uh, and between uh, the frequency. So there you have it, a little introduction um, to the wave nature of energy.